Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 25. And in this video, we have a golf data set that we want to analyze. And we're going to use Power Query to import that data, not from a CSV file, but from an Excel file. Then use a pivot table to build our discrete probability distribution. Now we're on the sheet PD4. And earlier in the class, when we wanted to import data, we were given a CSV file. And we would go to the Data Ribbon tab, Power Query, Get and Transform Group, and there it is. We would click this. But that's only for a text or CSV file. If we want to import data from inside an Excel file, we have to click Get data from file from Excel workbook. And guess what? An Excel workbook can have many objects. So the import process we're going to do is different than we did for a CSV file. Now let's go look at the Excel file and see why it's a different process. Here's the Excel file called Montclair Golf. And in an Excel file, we can have multiple objects. The object that we want is the Montclair Golf Worksheet. It has a single column proper data set. But there's also this worksheet called Other Worksheet. There's an Excel table. There are even some defined names. So when I select Price, it jumps to that column. All of those things are objects that are available for import. And Power Query is great because it'll let us choose which object we want to import. And we'll choose Montclair Golf Worksheet. Now, after we import this single column table, our goal is to build a discrete probability distribution. And all this is is a data set for hole number 9 at the Montclair Golf Course. And if we Control Down Arrow, it looks like there's 400 observations. Each one is a score from hole number 9. So we'll get a unique list of the possible scores, count them, and figure out the probabilities. Then we can answer questions like, what's the probability that someone gets less than par or greater than par? Now be sure and close this file before we try to import the data into our other Excel file. Now on the sheet PD4, I'm going to select B16, go to Get Data from File from Excel Workbook. Now in the Import Data dialog box, there's the file path. And of course, as always, we download it to that folder we created in video number one. I can double click to import this or select it and click Import. And here's the Navigator window as part of the Power Query import. And this Navigator window will appear anytime what you're trying to import has multiple objects. We have an Excel file, but you could easily be trying to import data from a database. In either case, off to the left, you find the object that you want. The blue bar at the top means that's an Excel table. The worksheet icon with these little tabs at the bottom, that means it's a worksheet. And that blue selecting just some cells is the icon that represents a defined name. We want to select Montclair Golf. And by the way, you can get a preview over here. That's the object we want. So now we click Transform Data. In the Power Query Editor, I see it has Montclair Golf as a name for this query. And that's fine. That's a good name. These steps are fine. We can see a promoted header and change the data type. We want to always verify the data type. And this is whole number, which is perfect for number of strokes needed to get the ball in hole 9. So now we want to close and load, close and load 2. And in the Import Data dialog box, different than in earlier videos, we're not going to load the data as an Excel table into the worksheet. We're going to load it directly to the Pivot Table cache. When I select Pivot Table Report, there will be no data in the worksheet. The table of data will only be loaded to the Pivot Table cache, allowing us to directly create our report. Now the reason that we're going to do this is because we don't need the table in the worksheet. 
We're not going to make any calculations from that table. We're not going to sort or filter. So when you do not need the data in the worksheet, loading directly to the pivot table cache avoids having the data in two places, the table in the worksheet and the pivot table cache. Now we're going to select existing B16. That's where our pivot table will start. Click OK. That's where our report will end up. Here's the pivot table fields task pane. That's the single column from our single table stored in the pivot table cache. Remember, as we talked about in video four, you can't actually go look at the table down in the pivot table cache, but we can definitely use it. Now we're going to drag the field down to rows, and instantly we get a unique list. These are all the possible scores after observing 400 different people go through hole number nine. Par, that's the score designated as what a very good player should be able to get. So it looks like someone got a two, which is below par, and there's lots of scores above par. Now what we're really interested in is count and percent of column total. Now, this is a number field. So by now in this class, you should know what happens when you drag a number field down to values. It defaults to sum. So we have to right click in the values area. And there's always two different ways to change your calculation. And what we want here is summarize values by and the aggregate calculation count. Wow, so four people got what's called a birdie. 55 got par, and most of those 400 people got well above par. Now let's drag this field down again, and we have two calculations to change. Right click, summarize value by, aggregate calculation count. Right click, show values as, and we want percent of column total. We want to change the field names at the top. I'm definitely adding x because this is our random variable. This will be frequency, and this will be p of x, our probability. So the probability that someone can get less than par, 1%. The probability of greater than par, and we'll do these calculations in just a second, but we add all those up, and that's the probability of getting greater than par. Now we want to notice something important about this pivot table as compared to the formula probability distribution we created last video. Notice if this is a score on hole number nine, well, we definitely can't get a zero, but we can get a one. But because that one is not in our data set, this pivot table cannot show that number one. Now I want to go back over and look at the first example we did last video. We used a formula and the sequence function to create 0 to 4. And for the first six months of data, we had no recorded instances of zero rooms used. If we had created a pivot table, that 0 would not have shown up. Now, it's a matter of preference what you want to list as your x value. In this case, it made sense since this was a banquet room, and there were only five possibilities, and that's it. Over here with this pivot table example, that golf data, well, later if this data updated, we might get a 1, and we might get something larger than 7. So the point here is if you want to list some variables that are not from the original source data set, then you've got to switch over to formulas. Now I want to move the pivot table fields task pane back over on the right. So I'm going to drag it until it lodges in the corner. We can toggle back and forth between the field list and our query. By the way, if you hover over this query, it tells you where it's loaded to a pivot table. Now that we have our discrete probability distribution, we can calculate a few probabilities. And I'm just going to use the sum function. And the first one is, hey, what's the probability you got par or less? That means less than or equal to 3. Alt equals these two right there, and Enter. So 14.75%. What's the probability you got greater than 3? That means greater than par. Alt equals. 
It's a bunch. When I hit Enter, 85.25%. So for a randomly selected golfer, you could say the chances or the odds that they're going to get par or less, 14.75. Now, what are the odds or chances that a randomly selected golfer could get par? 13.75%. Now, let's calculate expected value, or our mean. Equals sum product. We take all of the x values, not the frequencies, comma, and we're going to multiply it by all the probabilities. And sum product will multiply and then add. Wow. So. 4.3 is the average score for whole number 9. Now, what is the variation? And then what is the standard deviation? Well, we first have to take all of our random variable x values and subtract the mean. And we'll do this step by step like we did last video. We spill those results. But really, they need to be squared. So parentheses, caret 2, those are the squared values. But we need to multiply those by the probabilities. Those values there, F2. We're going to roll them up into a single cell using the aggregate function sum. We'll add all those up. And that gives us variance. Variance has a problem with squared units. So down here, standard deviation, which is what we're really after, we'll take the square root of variance. And there it is, 0.847. So we have a mean of 4.3 and a standard deviation of almost a full stroke. All right, so in this video, we importantly saw how to data, get data from file Excel workbook. And the difference between the CSV file earlier in this class is that be sure and pick the right object from your Excel file. Then we loaded directly to the pivot table cache. Because we didn't need the table to do anything else, we loaded it directly to our pivot table cache, made our discrete probability distribution, and calculated some probabilities and the mean and standard deviation. All right, next video, we're going to see how to use mean and standard deviation from a frequency distribution in an accounting and finance example. All right, we'll see you next video.